This is not Greece or Morocco or Italy. This is Tunisia, a tiny country located in Northern Africa. Despite its small size, we are told it's the best kept secret in all of Africa. Where is this guy taking us? Join Ali and I as we explore this ancient city and welcome to Tunis. Ali and I literally just finished flying from the most southern point in Africa here to the most northern point in Africa and country number 31 on our adventure through Africa and the world and super excited to be here. We're gonna pack as much as we can into this day and give you our honest first impressions. Yes. Is Tunis an underrated travel destination or is it a place you should avoid? All is gonna be covered here. Yeah, we have no idea. Is it yeah. safe? Is our people friendly? Yeah, is it more like the Mediterranean, like Greece yeah. or Italy? Is it more like the Middle East or North Africa? We have no idea. So we're super excited to have you along this adventure and discover with us and I have to say, we're already really impressed. We're actually staying right here at this gorgeous hotel that used to be the British Embassy here in Tunis, literally right at the very beginning yeah. of the historic Medina here, yes. kind of this market. As you can tell, yeah, we're super excited for this yeah. and hope you are as well. Let's get to it. Port Medina. Oh, okay. okay. This is Medina, 14 port. 14 port, and the 10 close. Ah, oh, close, and 10 okay. Yeah, the 10 close, 14 port. Ah, cool. And you know where, um, I was saying Paradise Cafe? No, Cafe Panorama. Oh, Cafe Panorama. Do you know? After, the 10, this is, this is for gold. This is under for gold. This is a specialist for the gold, not some uh, preparation. Okay. I think we're getting an unofficial walking tour. To the Medina. Big mosque. Ah. Basque big mosque. Big mosque. Uh, 15 port. 15 port. Ah. Doors? Doors. Yeah. Ah, 15, 15 doors. 15 port. Small port for Madame for the prayer. Ah. Big port for women for the prayer. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Where is he taking this? This is Captain Panorama. Ah. I mean this. Close, close, and a ten. Okay, now we're going inside the store. He says we can go upstairs for a view. Let's check it out. Oh wow! What's you? <laughs> My goodness! Oh, wow! My goodness! Beautiful. This is so beautiful. Yeah. Oh wow! It's like a secret ah, so here. panorama over there. Okay, this is totally unexpected. <laughs> we were planning on going here to Cafe Panorama, which is yes. literally right there, but it was closed until uh, 10. And then this uh, wonderful guy, uh, Ali, 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 here literally just like took us. He's like, oh, there's a, there's a better view, come with me. Took us up here on top of the shop. Yeah, he gave us like yeah. an unofficial walking tour through the Medina, which is super labyrinth, like. Yeah, like the silver area, the big mosque, all of that. And yeah, and now he let us this beautiful view. It's super, this is, uh, most super dead, nice. Uh, <laughs> What's your wow. name? My name is Dino. American Tunisia. Yay! Guys, beautiful and enjoy it. Here you go. Here's the American flag too, bro. USA! <laughs> Welcome to Tunisia! It is now 1 p.m. and oh my gosh, it's getting hot in here. Not like that type of humidity hot, but the sun is so intense. So definitely bring your water, your sunscreen. These scarves also help keeping you cool. And we're now at Place de la Kashba. 
This square is completely surrounded by government buildings and it's beautiful. It has this beautiful monument right in the middle and it has a lot of historical significance as well. I gotta say, as we were taking photos of the monument and everything, more Tunisian people and Algerian people also because it's a neighboring country that we've noticed has a lot of ties with Tunisia. But a lot of them passing by asking where we're from, giving recommendations of places to go, offering to take us to those places. So really, really impressed, loving it so far, but let's check out some more. As you can see, Ali and I are now here at the Olive Mosque, which is actually kind of ironic because Ali's last name in Portuguese, what? Is Creme de Mesquita Oliveira, which the last two mean of the of the olive tree mosque. Yeah, de Mesquita Mosque, Oliveira, Oliveira olive, olive tree. tree. So like, yeah, kind of coincidence that yeah. we're here. Yeah, it's and, called Azetona Mosque, I believe, in Arabic. Yeah, and this is the oldest mosque in all of Tunisia, and apparently the only mosque that lets non-Muslims yes. in, which is really nice, but there is a strict dress code if this yes. is your first time going to a mosque. So for men, it's a bit more relaxed. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. go figure. Um, but yeah, shoulders need to be covered, uh, as well as other body parts, uh, and you need to wear pants. I, just, I was told you could get away with, like, longer shorts, but I don't think that's the case here. I think they're pretty strict. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, pants and like a t-shirt's fine. Yeah. But then for women... You have to cover all of your hair and as well as your shoulders up to your wrist. Apparently as the much wrist, as yeah. you can. Yeah, like it's, I still see some, but um, try to wear long sleeve shirts if you can, or just have this all the time covering. And I was already wearing a pretty long skirt, but it needs to be longer. So yeah. either wear a really long um, skirt or dress or pants. So luckily we're right next to the bazaar. So, so you, I went and- Yeah, you haggled for like yeah. what, $4 gold <laughs> pants. So yeah, maybe not the most stylish. Like these yeah. other like Muslim women look very, you know, stylish, yeah, but stylish. but we do, you know, we do but what I'm we in. need to do. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it honestly definitely, definitely is worth it. Yes. This is like, I don't know, built in like the 800s AD, originally as like yes. a Roman basilica, yeah. and then converted to a mosque Yeah, so you can by the still Arabs. see some columns, some like Roman elements yeah. in here, so it's super unique. And in fact, the entire city is so unique, like totally. so beautiful. You see the blend of the Arabic and like the, the um, Roman and Greek and all of those influences, yeah. super exciting, uh, yeah. super beautiful. And honestly, in the 31 countries you've been to so far, Tunis is in the top, top of one of the most beautiful cities we've ever been. Like just from the architecture and it seems that the citizens and the government really try to keep things clean. Like we constantly see people cleaning. Totally. So there's still you know, some litter here or there, but definitely an effort to keep things restored, keep things clean. The paint, you know, like repainted. So really appreciate that. They're very tourist friendly, it seems like, yes. really, which honestly I wasn't really expecting, but I'm pleasantly surprised. It's been a great day so far, but it's also been a long day. We've been up since like 5.30 yeah. a.m. with the sun. Uh, it's been getting to us, so we're a little bit out of it. Uh, definitely hungry, so it's a perfect time to dine on some Tunisian treats. Yay. So let's eat. So not too far from a hotel, actually, it seemed to get a lot less touristy, and we're here at a highly rated restaurant called Cafe of the People in French, and we try to order two of the most popular dishes in all of Tunisia, which are chicken and fish with couscous. And it seems that uh, with these Tunisian meals, they all come with a big basket of bread, which is likely due to the French influence, I think. Um, but as soon as we walked in, everything smelled amazing. The food looks awesome. Now, let's dig in. Mm. <laughs> Bones. Jeez. The fish just melts in your mouth. The thing that they have on top of the couscous is definitely a bit spicy, but it's so good. I actually, I don't know what couscous is made of. In Brazil it's made of corn, but it's so soft. 
Love it. This chicken, like, so easily comes off the bone. It's like super, look at that, it just like, almost falling on its own. It's super, super tender. Good. <laughs> really good, especially the chicken. It's like super flavorful. That's really good, especially the chicken. I love that. Man, that meal was delicious. So good and so fast. <laughs> yeah, fast and knocked us right out. Yeah. But honestly, I'm like so impressed by Tunis. I can't believe that it's not a bigger kind of tourist destination. Yeah. And also we realized like it's such a short flight from so many like, European countries, like from yeah. Germany, it's like two hours. and. Like London, it's a few hours, it's crazy. Yes, and I actually thought Tunis was gonna be way more chaotic and unsafe. And I will say all of the locals we met said, be careful with your phone, yeah. be careful with your camera. They were warning us, so we were cautious, but it was not not nearly as chaotic or unsafe no, as I thought. No, we've definitely been in more unsafe places for sure. Yeah, and so, everyone was so nice. Yeah. So yeah, overall, like safety wasn't a big concern, just to kind of be careful. Um, food was great. The uh, art, the, the architecture, all of that yeah. was amazing. The people were really great as well and very affordable. So for us, it's definitely one of our top countries, yeah. or sorry, cities so far. Yeah. And, and we're actually now here in maybe a place that's even better than Tunis, yes. which is Monastir, about what, two hour drive away? Two and a half hours down. And south. we're really liking the vibe so far. We're just giving you a little sneak peek of our next vlog, exploring some of the history here in Tunisia. And man, I gotta tell you, uh, <laughs> we're loving it we have so yes. much more in store for you so we hope you love this adventure hope you found it valuable because we loved having you along with us uh, if you have any questions of course let us know in the comment section below and as always thank you so much for your support god bless you and your travels and look forward to seeing you in the next one until then bye, bye.